not yet. <laughs> okay, it's now we're ready. Time. Let's just go ahead and go. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Sorry, we were just having a little bit of fun before we started. Happy Thursday, everybody. Yes. Happy Thursday. I'm a little disoriented. You're on the, this side of me now. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes. yes. Oh. Yes. And I feel naked. Even though I have a table today, I don't have anything covered in the front of the table today. So <laughs> I should have brought the bag up from the... Uh, from the Keep your hands up. I gotta keep my hands up there like this. Go. Although this table is a little bit more, oh. fits a little bit better for me. Yeah, maybe I'll have to put a tablecloth on next time. Next time. Yeah. Next time. Now you know how the rest of us feel, Tom. We're yeah. always naked. I know you all are always naked. So yeah. I mean, I, you know, I just, I don't, I just don't like that. I, I know. I, I kind of know how you feel now. So, but, <laughs> but we're hoping that the sound's going to be a little bit better today yes. than what it was for our Tuesday uh, show. We're sorry about that. Um, I, I understand the only thing that really sounded great was just the, the piano the playing piano that I play. was doing. You know? Everybody said that was the best part of it. Yes. The new version is uploading to YouTube. So we, uh, we have Michelle's husband, who is an IT kind of uh, a guru. expert guru yes. type thing. I know he does a lot of this on the side. So he is working on trying to redo um, the, the broadcast from Tuesday and uh, bump the sound way up. So he thinks he may have been able to do that, and we're reloading that now. So I don't know how long it'll take to put that in there, but... Um, Maybe by the end of today. Yeah, so after you see and... this, if you want to go back and look at um, that one again, you can. There was some good stuff in that. There was. There especially was. talking with Kat and Tony about Absolutely. what's going on with the healthcare center. So, um, so anyway, that, we might recommend that you do mm -hmm. that. But Ken, we're glad to have you here today. Yeah. Good to be here. Oh, does, yeah. does everybody know where we are? That's a I good don't question. know. I, you know. Where are we? Yeah, where are we, Lisa? Okay, we are up in the clubhouse in the tea side room. The tea oh, side so look room. at the big, beautiful TV behind I'll, us. I'll oh. hold my pinky up. Oh, for tea. <laughs> for tea. Tea. Okay. I was worried there a little bit. I wasn't sure what that meant. <laughs> Not sure. You know, you know Carol Burnett used to do this thing. Oh, right. Yeah, right. Right. Maybe your thing is the pinky. The I pinky? don't know. You yeah. know. <laughs> so someday. It was a tea thing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Someday we'll be able to come back in this room and use it for events. I know that's a novel idea. Yeah. Someday. Go figure. We will be back up here. Go figure we will be able to do that, right? I so, know. Yeah. I know. And, if, and if you're having trouble with your vision, this is a place to watch a football game. Yes, yes. it is. Yes. Or anything Absolutely. Matter, right? I mean, Absolutely. it's a great place to be. So. Yeah. For sure. Okay, hey, so hey, I gotta tell you, I, I, I need a prayer request. My yeah. uncle Freddie Bob, remember? Oh, Freddie Bob. Yeah, Freddy yeah, Bob. of course. He fell into an upholstery machine the other day. Uh oh, oh what happened? He's fully recovered now. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Woo! I'm it... just setting the tone. I was yes. just saying, it might not get any better than this. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> it might get worse. I did bring a joke for the end of the day. Good. Though, so Thank you, Tom. Yes, you know, I. I'm starting to realize that I think my jokes are better than Ken's on a lot of occasions. So not always. That, that's now, entirely you're possible. I mean, you're you're funny in general, and I think there's no there's there's no debate about that. But you know, I think my jokes sometimes are better. A better. I, I don't know. So. I could be wrong. Maybe you all can weigh in no. on that. But um, I agree. you know what? The fun thing is we do it together. Well, yeah, that is exactly yes. right. So that's that's yeah. what I like about it. So. Okay, so Lisa, obviously we're not doing the uh, the trivia this we're week not. because we we're don't not. have a way of being able to do that, right, unfortunately, right. since we're recording this show. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we're one week now, we're almost one week into the NPR renovation are, as far yes. as these audio visuals. And it's going well so far, yes. and we're on day four, yes. so we're still on track to open beginning of July. Yeah. That's kind of what we're aiming for. Yeah. So, so far we're still on track, but it's, yeah. it's early in the project. So... I don't know if some of you have, um, some of you in the building may have felt some of the vibrations, but I think it was Tuesday, right before we were getting Ooh. ready to, uh, or maybe it was throughout the day. I think it was. They were core drilling the concrete yes, right they were. underneath our offices, and, and we were talking like this a little bit as uh, that was going on. I told Tom, lift his feet just in case they come through. So, we were worried that they were going to drill right that through was, the carpet, right up into our feet. It's a little so. rough. <laughs> but that's good. That was a good sign. Yes. We know obviously they're yes. working down there. So. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so um, I think, let me see, I have my little agenda. Have your here. stats today? So, the stats, yeah, okay. okay. So, uh, let me put my glasses on because that's the only way I'm going to be able to read this. 
So, um, you know, we saw, again, a lot. You know, this, is, um, this has been two days since I reported, and we've seen a, another big increase in number of completed tests. We, uh, we actually went up almost 29,000 tests in the last two days. So that's a lot of tests. That's almost 15,000 tests a day that they're doing. So we really have seen the state pick up on the tests. So if my math is right, and it should be, we only had an extra, and I'm gonna double check this because I did this really fast, but that is correct. Uh, we only had another 1,753 positive cases since um, Tuesday. So that means that when you do the math and you do 1,753 cases in the last two days versus 29, almost 29,000 tests, that's only 3.7%. So that percentage dropped again. Remember on Tuesday, the percentage was higher. Right. Today, for whatever reason, the percentage is lower. So we're still running right around 7% as a state when you look at the number of positive cases versus the number of completed cases. So. Um, and just in total, we have 46,855 confirmed positive cases out of 667,422 tests. So uh, unfortunately, we've had an additional 50 deaths since Tuesday. So we're at 1,168 for the state. Um, and the other thing that's a little alarming, I think, for me is to see that the hospitalizations just continue to go up. Um, we were at 856 as of today. Um, so that's a lot higher than what we've been running. You know, we, we were doing that 650 to 750, and now we're running, it seems like 750 to 850, and now I'm worried that we're pushing that 850 mark now, and maybe we, and you know, we know that North Carolina's had more cases here of late, and so that's a little worrisome that our hospital rates are going up. Um, so, you know, and I, 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 I don't know how many times to say it, I, I personally think, and the state I know is weighing this right now about whether or not to make masks mandatory. Uh, maybe I'm a little biased, but I absolutely think the state should make masks uh, mandatory. And I know there are some people out there who um, maybe can't, because of a condition, can't wear a mask, and I get that, but that's all the more reason. If, they're, if they can't wear a mask because right. of the condition they're in, then the rest of us have to be careful about wearing masks so that we don't talk, you know, harm those types of folks that really can't wear masks. And so, anyway, you know, I'm not the governor, um, and I know the governor's got a lot of weight, um, a lot of weighing factors that he's got to wade through. But you know, personally, um, you know, just because I think it's working well for us here, I think they should make mask mask mandatory everywhere. And I really think that the businesses themselves. And this is Tom getting on the soapbox here, but. The businesses themselves, you know, should be monitoring that and not letting people into their restaurants or their stores or whatever unless they're wearing a mask. And I think if the governor really wants to put some teeth into this, he can't go around arresting people that aren't wearing masks, but he can find the businesses that are letting people in that aren't wearing masks. And I can tell you, if the businesses start getting fined for not letting people in with masks, guess what's going to happen? They're going to make sure that people come in here wearing masks, uh, otherwise they don't come in. So. Anyway, I'm going to go off my soapbox. But, well, um, we, we have seen that this thing uh, can get away from you in New York. Absolutely, yes. And boy, we don't want that to happen. We here. do not. Well, thank you, Kim. No. We do not want that to happen here. And so, you know, North Carolina keeps moving up as a state in the number of cases. And you know, we've got to do something to kind of change that flow. So anyway, you know, that's, that's I'm really very thankful for our residents here because you know, when I walk the hallways here, residents are wearing their masks. Yes. Even some of the residents that were not real keen about wearing sure. them before, they're wearing them, and I appreciate yeah. that. Absolutely. I, I think we all got a piece of this, and we all need to be doing that. Yes. So yes. please remember that. Um, and then the, uh, the counties, um, you know, I'm just going to mention a couple of them. You know, Mecklenburg continues to rise. They have 7,563 cases out of the 46,000. They've got, what is that, about 15% of the cases are in Mecklenburg County. Um, you know, and more locally here, um, Forsyth has 2,333 cases. We have in Guilford here 2,167 cases. So, you know, we're still seeing those numbers rise. Um, you know, I, I, I won't make any commentary about this, but um, I'm sure you all saw on the, on the news that um, uh, Greensboro Fire Department, they had, unfortunately, some of the firefighters went and did a little golfing weekend away together, and somebody apparently got exposed, or they got exposed somehow, and you know, they had seven or eight uh, firefighters that got, uh, that came down with the COVID-19. So, 
you know, we just can't be too careful, I think, and that's that's the message for today about this. But and uh, then just looking at it from the nursing home and residential care facility side, um, of the 46,855 cases, 5,197 are nursing home residential care facility cases. That represents about 11.5%, which um, I think is about, I'm losing, I think I'm losing no. one thing here. So I'm going to It's when, it's when, my, when I turn it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to have to just do this. Um, you know, when, um, when we've been looking at the statistic, we saw when we first started, it was 15% that the cases were. And so we've seen a gradual decline down to that 11%, 11.5% mark. So um, I think that's a good sign in one way, because that means it's less cases in nursing homes and retirement communities, but it's probably a bad sign that it's probably, there's more cases outside of our, our controlled environments. Uh, unfortunately, 704 of 11, uh, 1168 cases, uh, excuse me, of 1168 deaths have come from nursing homes. That's about 63%. It's a little higher than what we've been running. Um, and then we have 169 nursing homes and residential care facilities that have um, at what's considered an outbreak, which is two or more cases. And that can come from either staff or residents um, or a combination thereof. And that's eight more than what we were on uh, Tuesday. So, you know, we know this is still out there. I mean, you know, just because we're in phases um, and reopening doesn't mean it's not still out there. And it, it doesn't mean that we can let our guard down. So we just need to kind of keep rocking with that. And, you know, Lisa um, debated about how much of this to share. You know, um, one of our sister communities um, has had a situation where a, 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 a nursing assistant tested positive and they've done some mass testing now of residents and staff that were connected to that nursing assistant. And uh, we know of, or we can hear rumor that there may be some others that are positive as a result. We don't know if it's a result of this particular CNA, but we, we're seeing that a re, um, potentially even a resident at this facility might have COVID-19. We're not 100% sure of that right. yet. I haven't gotten that official yet, but I got unofficial, I got that. So, you know, we're seeing some of that. Um, you know, we're seeing um, that, you know, as we talked about a couple times before, I just, you know, again, want to reinforce this, that, you know, our strategy still is to do our best to try and keep it out of here. There's no question that's what we're still trying to do. But, you know, we also realize that, you know, this is a marathon, not a sprint. This is, we're in this for the long haul. Um, we got to find some balance and so we got to be able to have some things for residents to be able to do to keep their sanity but yet at the same time do our best to try and keep them safe and so you know our philosophy's changed a little bit um, and you know we're doing our best to kind of find that balance within the phases that the governor the governor has put out and you know our strategy now is you know trying to as we see um, and hear about somebody becoming positive here is to contain it and that's really the game plan and that's not just here, that's really, I think that's the game plan now, almost any retirement community, a nursing home, anybody that I've had contact with, we're all kind of coming to the same conclusion. This is the strategy that you need to have. So, so I know a lot today on this particular subject. Um, and you know, I'm sure you all probably are getting tired a little bit of talking about coronavirus and you know, um, the effects of that, you know, after three months, honestly, I'm tired of talking about the coronavirus, but you know what? <laughs> We're in this for the long haul. Right. We're gonna be in this for a while. We need to keep this at the forefront of our minds. We need to keep people safe. Um, please don't take shortcuts. Please um, do your best to try and remember that um, you are not just trying to protect yourself, but everything you do is a, pot a potential protection or a a problem for us as a community and so please remember that as you're out there and about doing things please wear your mask and please stay six feet away if you're visiting with family stay outside um, of the homes you know those kind of things again we're still not letting that uh, visitors or family members in here yet that's just an extra precaution right now at this right. point you know do I see us going to that at some point I hope so I mean I really do because I think at some point we need to get there but we're not there yet. Um, the industry's not there yet. I don't think, you know, quite honestly, I'm not even sure that, uh, I, I don't, I know that the uh, the state wouldn't even allow us to do that yet. So, we, but we're getting closer maybe to that, but we still got some work to do. So, enough said about that. Lisa, what else do we have? We have okay. a spectrum update, right? Yes. Um, 
we want to repeat some of the things we did on Tuesday just in case, even with the upgraded volume, it's not, not as good as we would like it to be. So just as a reminder, Spectrum has figured out what the issue is with 1390. Hallelujah. They've had to order parts, though, for it to be able to, it's a systematic thing. So, so are those parts coming from China? I don't know where they're coming from. Okay, I hope they're not coming from China. <laughs> That's what I'm So thinking. because parts have been ordered and we have to wait on repairs from Spectrum, we don't have a date of when 1390 will be back up again. Right. Could be short term. It could be a week. We just don't know. Um, so for now, we're really trying to put everything on Care Merge as best as possible. So if you go to Care Merge, you can also access our YouTube channel, which will have Jill's exercise classes. Yeah. People have been asking about that. Yeah. So you can still get those. Go. You just have to go through Care Merge, or you can go directly through YouTube. Let's say you have a smart TV, and maybe you have a TV this big. I doubt it, Probably but, not. but maybe. <laughs> So if you have a smart TV, you can also go to a YouTube channel on yes. that. So yes. you could watch Jill's exercise class right on your TV. Right. Um, so that's also an option for folks. And if you don't know if you have a smart TV, you can have it tested. <laughs> Call Ken. Yes. Ken. Yes. He'll be glad to come and test your TV. I have, a series of, I have a series of questions I ask. <laughs> Okay, where so were just, we, Lisa? Yeah, yeah. And as Tom mentioned before, the multi-purpose room, we're still doing good with the AV upgrade system there. Plus, we are also doing lighting changes in there, Tom. Ooh, so yeah. stage lighting, we're really doing a big upgrade there. So okay. when we get back in that NPR, it's it's going to be a whole different ballgame for us. It might. We might not even be able to see from the stage. Might I, be I don't know. There, we, know. We don't know yet. So <laughs> it's very exciting, though. Um, Okay, let's see. Why do we need a stage anyway? I mean, it's not like we have people Why that like to be on stage. No, anymore. that's right. Yeah, um, we don't have any hams in our community at all, <laughs> right, Ken? None. 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 You I know can, what? Now you, I can now you have some relations that like to be can and to be hams, but that, you know, not you, Ken. Not me. Not you. No, 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 not at all. Uh, also, a reminder about the golf course. If you're a walker, just as a reminder, you don't want to be in the golf course when they're playing golf. So just plan on, don't walk on the course from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Right. Just look at that as that's golfing time. So right. you can walk before that or walk after it. Um, and that's just for your safety. We just don't want anybody getting hit in the head. And, you know, Ken and Tom both play it sometimes. And yeah. Golf balls sometimes go where you don't want them to go. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And in my case, they always go where I don't want them to go. So, so, so there is no safe place on the golf course. <laughs> so if you're going to walk on the golf course, walk on the green. It's probably your safest place when I'm playing because I'm certainly aiming towards it. We'll never hit it. But oh. now Ken's the other way around. See, you you know, he's, he's pretty straight on his drives and his shots. And so... And it's kind of neat, Lisa. I'm sitting here talking about golfing, and I'm watching some and of our residents today. out there playing yeah, right now, cool. teeing off. So it's pretty cool. I think cool. this was actually their first day out of the golf shop because Tuesday it got rained out, right? Yeah, we've been so, rained out. Yeah. So and I've been hit by a golf ball. It hurts. Have you? Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah not it good. does. It, it really hurts. That's not good. So for hit, your sake, I got hit by a golf club once, but not a real golf Ooh, ball. Was it purposeful? Well, I got too close to somebody that was swinging, oh. and they oh. came around and oh. whacked me right in the head. So oh. I learned very quickly, you don't walk behind yeah. somebody. That, that, that explains me. some things to me. It, oh, I don't know. What does that explain? <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, Ken? Oh, So please just help us with that for safety reasons. Um, let's see. If you are a golfer as well, we have some exciting things coming. We do. What is that, Lisa? Okay. For some of you that are new here, yes, or old, or old, that didn't come out right there. It did. It did. So it's, it's some of you that are new here or have been around here for a while. There. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, because like they're that. not really old. Okay. They've just, they've just been here a while. So. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you've been here a while, you know that we offer an annual membership for using the golf course. That's here. right. So instead of paying the five dollars each time you play for the for the cart for nine holes, the cart fee, right? You could pay an annual fee. Right. So it's an unlimited, nice yeah. unlimited, 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 unlimited annual fee. There's a lot of membership benefits when you do that. Oh, is so, there? And it's a great, reasonable price, and yeah. you get some perks. Yeah. Now we're not going to share it yet, Tom. No. There's, there's a flyer coming out. No, that's right. right? Keep we them in suspense, wanna, right? Yes. Yes. But you all love that. 
But by this weekend, <laughs> it's gonna be up on Care Merge and in your in-house mailbox. It's a flyer, if you're a golfer, you need to see it because there's also gonna be some advantages if you act quickly. Yeah. Ooh. There's gonna be some perks. I am intrigued. You know, I know. some of the perks are so good, Lisa, you may not even be a golfer and you might wanna do a membership. <laughs> Right. I mean, even Lisa was talking to me. Do you have to be a resident to be a member? I mean, can you be a staff member and be a member? Because you know, this is pretty good. There's so. some good perks yeah, to it. So that'll be good. Okay, so just be watching for that coming out in the next day or two here. Yeah. And then? Yeah, I, I want to go ahead and talk. I had a construction meeting this morning. Yes. So, um, you know, we're moving along pretty good on the wellness center. Um, I think, you know, the two pieces that are still left are the wellness center, finishing up the wellness center and getting it open. And then the second part of that is the continuing of the renovation of the healthcare center, which we have started that. That started last week, so we're in phase two for the healthcare center. And that's basically just taking what was the Pebble Beach dining area and gutting all that now since we have the the new bistro, you saw the bistro at our show on Tuesday, even if you couldn't hear us, you got a chance to see what, a little bit of what the bistro looks like. But that operation's going, so we don't need the kitchen in Pebble Beach anymore. So we've demolished all that and got all that out of there, and they're going to be creating resident rooms out of that. So that's that works ongoing. But the main thing I wanted to talk about was the wellness center. and. So, you know, it's good news and bad news, I think. Um, the good news is that the inside of uh, the Wellness Center is pretty much done. As a matter of fact, we're going to be doing a walkthrough, our first walkthrough kind of punch out on Monday. So that's really exciting, and I'm mm -hmm. really excited about that. The unfortunate part, though, is that the outside of the building is lagging, and, um, you know, the weather hasn't helped us a whole lot here lately. So we're probably not going to get done with the outside of the building until the beginning of August and get our, our certificate of occupancy. So we really won't be able to use the building until August at this point. Um, but uh, we're getting closer. I mean, you know, we're now really five weeks away. It's hard to believe. Five weeks away from August, right? Five or six weeks right. away. So right. I mean, we're, we're getting, it's not that far away. And I remember when this whole project was just a twinkling in your eye. Yes. Has it been that long ago? It has not been that long ago. So it's, it's actually moved yes. fairly quickly in my mind. But... You know, I'm excited because I'm, I'm excited for residents to be able to use the walking track and mm -hmm. the, the fitness classroom, facility and the classroom, the game, the game room, and, you know, all the good stuff that goes along with right, that. Right. And so, um, and, you know, even if we are in, you know, depending on what stage, what phase we're in, you know, we still think there may be a way to use at least some Are of that well in the center. Um, so we're still working on how that would look and feel. But I think we're all kind of hoping that maybe by then we'd be in phase three and maybe the fitness centers would be open again, at least in some capacity. And right. we can actually open up that wellness center for residents. So great. wouldn't that be awesome? So I'm looking forward to the slam dunk contest. I think that's going to be great. <laughs> right. It should be, yeah. We'd have to lower the basket quite a bit for <laughs> us. But yes. Oh, well, yeah, you could do that. Yeah. Or get a trampoline, you could. Oh yeah, trampoline. that's what I was thinking. Okay, I thought so. <laughs> Great, yeah. That's all we need is a workman's comp injury, right? <laughs> no, that'll be fine, actually. So, okay. Do we have any questions today? We do. We have a few. Okay. Um, and this is a repeat from Tuesday. Can okay. I stay in my home when housekeeping comes? Yeah, the answer to that so is no. It is no, and we did put out a memo this right. week as well, just to remind folks that. We are asking, well, we're requiring, actually, not yeah, we're just not asking. We're not asking. We're requiring you yes. to leave your homes. Correct, correct, yes. And that's I, just I think it should be obvious to folks why yeah. that's necessary. We need to protect the residents, and we need to protect the staff. And so um, if you have things that you need to have done, you know, just like we did before, leave notes on yeah. your kitchen countertop oh, for yes. the housekeeping staff. But... We cannot have you sit in your homes. That does not work. That's not going to help us. As a matter of fact, we have told our housekeeping staff, if you insist on staying in the home, that they are supposed to leave. So yes. they will not be coming into your home if, until you leave the apartment or cottage. And I'm sorry about that, but you know, if you're in a cottage and you have a patio out back, go out in your patio out back or go into your garage or do something. I had a, we had a resident that went into their, we sat did. in their car for an hour while right, right. Uh, in the garage. I said, well, that's fine. Just don't turn the motor on, but uh, that's fine. You know, go ahead and do that. Right. Um, take a walk, come down to the community building, sure. check out, do something, but um, please don't be in there when the housekeeping right. team is in there. Yep. So, 
And if you feel uncomfortable with that, they don't have house right. cleaning service. Right, so just cancel the service. Just don't That's have okay service. too. And that, yes. that is really okay. Yes. But this is the only way we can we know of to keep you safe and keep the staff safe right. as well. Right. So. And this goes without saying, but if you're sick, not not even virus sick. I'm yeah. not talking that. Just if you're sick, yeah. Please call to cancel your service. That's not something we we would want to have our team come into, or for you to have to feel like you have to use your leave your home when you're sick either. That's right. So please just call and cancel for that week. That's right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And we needed to mention that because it's it's yeah. honestly it's like our housekeepers don't want to be in a position where they have right. to tell a resident right. that they're not coming in. Exactly. And you. Whether you know it or not, you're you're putting them in that position, and it's making them very upset and very uncomfortable. Right, and so, right. this is why we're doing this. And please don't blame the housekeeper's staff. If you want to yell right, at somebody right. about it, come talk to me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Another um, question, right? Yes, yes. Kind of related to the wellness area. Where will the parking be for the new wellness area when it opens? So we talked yeah. a little bit about that on Tuesday. We did. I think people sometimes forget that the first piece of things that the first thing we did from a renovation standpoint was to remove the tennis court. We did. And when we removed the tennis court, we created a parking area that has, I'm guessing it's about 12 car parking spots. I think so. Right. And then it has about 40 golf cart parking spots. And so um, that's where we want you to park. You know, to be right. able to use the bistro, to use the wellness area, those are the areas that we want you to be able to park in. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we we got word that maybe a couple staff members were parking in there, and we we're like, okay, right. yeah, you know what? We forgot when we were shut down exactly. for a while. Right. Our staff, we were telling staff, you know, just park anywhere you want at that point because right. the residents weren't really coming to the right. building at that point. Absolutely. So now that they so we are, so we went back yeah. and told them staff yeah. shouldn't be parking there now, and. Um, and you know our maintenance team parks in that little they do that little they do. extra parking lot golf cart parking right. area and so we're going to work on that right. once the wellness center opens up we think they can they can move, they can move right. back into the back and that'll take so care of that so the timing too. should work up it should be about right yeah, yeah. so yeah. um let's see uh this was a new one tom okay can i park my golf cart in the 20 minute spot in front of the main building or around the circle where the flowers are by the flag. So this was this was a great question because um, a while ago, I can't remember, was it a year plus ago? Oh, it's been a couple years now. Maybe a couple years? Yeah. Wow, time flies. I know. We created the new golf cart parking out front where there's the two strips in the center of the parking lot. Great, great spots. Absolutely. Um, and that was really to encourage the golf cart use and to have good safe spots for you. So we wouldn't want you parking around that circle Absolutely. where the flowers are. It really is not safe. We had done that years ago, yeah. and it was not safe. We we had things that happened. We had some near misses of residents we getting did. hit. We had residents trip over the curb. We, we did. had all kinds of Absolutely. issues with that. So fire trucks trying to come in to yeah. make that swing around the curb. Yeah. Um, our big bus, Miss Nancy, was having trouble, had trouble in getting in there. So. Yeah. We did away with that parking around the circle. So this was a good question because there's a lot of new folks here. Yeah. And just to know that that is not a designated area for for the golf carts. It's it's the two rows in the center of the parking lot there that are that are clearly marked with golf carts. That's right. That 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 is where your golf carts would want to go. And the 20 minute spot that is for cars. It is. It's a car. It's a drop off. If you yeah. need to run in, get your in house mail. You're coming right back out. Um, that's not a spot we want you to sit in if you go to a meal. It's Absolutely really, not. That's a that's a twenty minute spot. That's a short term spot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It defeats the purpose if somebody goes and has a meal it there. Does. You're not spending twenty minutes there. Right? No, not so, typically. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Is that all of our questions? That's it. I've got a question. Yes. What do you call a short fortune teller who's escaped from prison? A short fortune teller who's escaped from prison. I don't know, Ken. What do you call them? You call them a small, medium, at large. <laughs> That's pretty good. Actually, I like that one. That's pretty good. good one. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Small, medium, at large. I like it. It's a clever twist on words. It is. It? Yes. it is. Yes. Yep. Well, so Ken, what exciting things do you have for us today? Because, you know, you have brought some some very um, deep stuff coming from Yogi Berra yeah, and yeah. from... 
<laughs> from, was it Willie Rogers? We were, oh, so Will Rogers, I said Willie Nelson. Will Rogers, yeah. <laughs> no, but I can do Willie Nelson. Can you do Willie Nelson yeah, too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's quite a philosopher too. I'm not sure if he's always sober, but probably he's not. not. <laughs> he's, the, he's the guy that ought to be singing Rocky Mountain High, probably. Right. Probably. Yeah. Oh, um, well. <laughs> Back to Ken. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't bring a devotional, but I do want to remind people that they can also get my devotionals on YouTube, also. Oh, and on see. Care Birds. There you go. Right. There you go. No reason to go there. And they're only two minutes long. Oh my gosh! Oh. It's not like a sermon. Wow. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, it's just meant to be a little. Or were your sermons two minutes long when you used to preach sermons? Yeah. <laughs> I just, I just put ten of them in a row. <laughs> you just screwed them all for the whole week. <laughs> I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm working on an article about how we live together as a community when we don't all share the same religious beliefs. Oh, that's good. And how important that is because we might come into this place thinking that everyone is sort of going to be like me right. and think like me and believe like me. Right. And a lot of that's true. I mean, right. there are a lot of similarities, sure. but there are also some differences. And uh, I was making a list of the religious traditions that I knew of, and I've got 10. Wow. At least. That's, that's, so, that's cool. And, and that's not counting denominational breakdowns. Right. And I'm lumping all the mainstream Protestants in. Oh, there you yeah. go. So we've got, we've got Catholic, and we've got Orthodox, and we've got Buddhist, and we've got Agnostic, and we've got uh, mainline Protestant, we've got Evangelicals, um, we've got nuns. Okay. That's the new category now for people who don't claim a any particular religious Oh, so it's not, not N-U-N. No, no, not nuns. <laughs> no, I, I, lo I love them with the I'm like, I don't remember having any nuns here. <laughs> we, do, we do have a former nun here. Oh, do we? Yes. yes. Yeah. I can't say who it is. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, don't be. Yeah, yeah. do you want to betray that trust? Yeah, 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 yeah. We absolutely have at least one. Okay. And uh, we, I don't know. We may have others. We don't have. But anyway, so we're a religiously diverse group. Yeah. Which is really, really cool, nice. right? Yeah, yeah but but the uh, I read somebody who wrote an article and said when you're thinking about other religions, there's some guidelines that are really helpful for you and one is uh, talk to adherents rather than adversaries of that particular religious view. Yeah. So if you get all your information about a religion from the people that are attacking it, right, then you're going to develop a negative view of it. Right. So, so talk to the adherents, the people that actually practice it. Right. Which here you could absolutely do by just having a conversation with them. Yeah. Um, another thing is you don't compare the best of your tradition with the worst of another person's tradition. Right. Because anybody can do yeah, anybody can do that. Right. Yeah. We all have skeletons in our religious closets. Sure. Right. And we all have heroes. Well, the, the analogy to that is like saying, trying to compare Lisa's strengths to my weaknesses. Right. You know, it's just not, that's not a fair comparison. Right. Well, of course, Lisa has so many strengths, it's just, you know. It's just, right, yeah, she kind of overpowers you. Uh, you know, I, I have to face that every day, but, you know, that's just the way it goes, so. But, uh, but what that does is turn our diversity into what it should be, which is a strength. Yes. I mean, because it, it, it helps us respect yes. each other. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Absolutely right. Okay. So that's a particle you're working on? Yeah. Or what? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just for the, for the encompass. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could almost do a sermon out of that. Almost. Almost. Yeah. At, two, at least two minutes. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I bet you could string together a couple of them there and yeah. you'd probably be okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. That's pretty cool. Yep. And I, I, I don't know all the new residents that have moved in, but I suspect that there's some diversity, diversity there, too. Yeah. I'm sure there is. Yeah. I'm sure there is. We welcome that. Well, thank you. Appreciate wow. that. Yes. So, you know, I forgot something when I was doing my update. You did? Yes. And I, I, um, oh, a big something. Yeah, because this just happened, yes. right? Yes, yes. Hot off the press. So, um, you know, you all have been so great about reaching out to our senator, Michael Garrett, who's here. And I've had residents that have actually reached out beyond Michael Garrett to other members of the House or the Senate and about the sales tax issue. So... So this isn't a done deal yet, but I am going to read a statement that I just got. I mean, this is really hot off the press. Um, this came from our leading age North Carolina president, Tom Akins. And so here is what he says, and I'm just going to read it verbatim. He said, uh, Dear Tom, a quick update on the status of our efforts on the sales tax issue. 
We've continued to work with leadership at the General Assembly and believe we have crafted a solution that would do two things. First, it would give CCRCs certainty that any assessment of sales tax they have received in the past or would have received before a certain date in the future, and he's got in parentheses, we're working on that exact date, could be 100% forgiven by the Secretary of the Department of Revenue, Revenue, including any interest and penalties. The current language reads that the Secretary may grant a refund, and we are working to change it to shall. The second it would provide us, it, it, the second um, thing that they've been working on and the status of their efforts is uh, that they would provide us with time, meaning our association time, to convince the General Assembly and others that a sales tax on monthly fees is the wrong approach for the state of North Carolina to pursue. We are working to make the date by which we would need to convince the General Assembly of our position, you know, a grace period for, for lack of better terms, um, June 30th of 2021. So that would give us about a year to convince the General Assembly that this is a bad idea. So um, that would be great too. I know they were trying to shoot for the end of next year, but right. you know, even having a year at this point would be better than nothing. So this is what he also says, and I, this is, I think this is the, the part that I really want the residents to get. He says, we are at one of those silent moments when we cannot see or hear about the negotiations which are taking place. If you are asked by residents, this is his direction to me, if you are asked by residents or staff or board members what they can be doing now, the best thing is to just sit tight and let the leadership of the General Assembly work to try and make this happen. Additional communication at this point, we believe, would be counterproductive. So if you haven't reached out to Michael Garrett or anybody else at this point, we're asking you to hold off at this point. Sounds like the message has been received and the General Assembly is working on this. So um, he says, the last thing he says is there are a number of meetings that will be occurring today. And as soon as we hear any more, we will let you know. Um, and um, that's a great, that's great report yes. Yes. Um, from Tom Aiken. So that hopefully will be good. It hasn't solved the issue completely, but it's you know just being able to put it off until we can fight it more from a, uh, uh, having time to be able to truly fight this um, with the General Assembly in the future is going to be good. So, so keep your fingers crossed. Thank you so much for those that took the time and effort to send letters, make phone calls, send emails. It worked. I really think it's working. So, so thank you. That's great. Yeah, that's great news. Yeah. Okay, Lisa. Okay. Do we have birthdays today? We do. Well, we have none today or Friday. Okay. But let me review a few before we do another show. Yeah. We won't do another show till next Tuesday. Right. So before then. Okay. Next birthday is Bob Law on Saturday. Okay, Bob. Jackie Wilson and Veda Anderson on Sunday. Wow. Pat Russell, John Corbett, and Linda Jackson on Monday. Wow. So that catches everybody before we have our show again. Happy birthday. Yeah, yeah. happy birthday happy to all of you. Birthday. That's fantastic. Yes. That's fantastic. Yep. So, you know, we the last time you were on, Ken, we we, we joked about doing a joke off. Mm -hmm. and yep. that, right. But we said we only had one each, so I don't know how much of a joke <laughs> off it really was at that point. But well. so you but you actually have a joke, yes. right? Yes. Do you have one? And I have one. Because we'll, yeah, we'll let the audience... We'll let the audience yeah. decide which one they like. this yeah. again. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, I think I went first last time. I'll let you go first. Okay, I'll time. go first this time. Yeah, okay. That's all right. Fair. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. 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 Okay, so... And by the way, I did win last time. I just I want you to know. <laughs> yeah. I'm not trying to rub it in. I'm just trying to... It was you. clearly a You have to understand that time. my yes. idea of a good joke is something that makes you grow. It's so bad. Oh, so that's okay. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. See, my well, idea of reach out something that makes you laugh. Oh, <laughs> I've heard of people like that. You know, so maybe it's not fair to do a joke off because it's not really. <laughs> they are coming from two different premises. Two different perspectives. Yes. A father and his young daughter are on the elevator going yeah. down, yes. uh, and it stops on another floor, and an attractive lady gets on and stands in front of them, and the doors close, and the elevator starts to move, and the the young woman who's gotten on the elevator turns around and slaps the father in the face, oh, turns no. back around, the door's open, she gets off, doors close again, and the little daughter says, she must not have liked you, Daddy. And Dad says, yeah, she hit me pretty hard. And the daughter said, yeah, I didn't like her either. When she got on the elevator, she stepped on my foot, and so I pinched her. 
<laughs> that's cute. I like that. That wasn't a grown one. That was a, that was a laugh one. That's cute. All right, I have one for you. And I, I think it's funny that we were talking about nuns today uh -oh. because this okay. is actually about a priest and a nun. Okay. Okay. But it's so, none of our business, right? It's not. Okay. No, it's not. Okay. So uh, a priest and a nun were lost in a snowstorm. After a while, they came <laughs> upon a small cabin. Being exhausted, they prepared to go to sleep. There was a stack of blankets in the corner and a sleeping bag on the floor, but only one bed. Oh no, this is a bed. Yeah, this is this isn't looking good. But being a gentleman, the priest said, "Sister, you sleep on the bed. I'll sleep on the floor in the sleeping bag." That was nice, right? That's very nice. Just as he got zipped up in the bag and was beginning to fall asleep, the nun said, "Father, I'm cold." So he unzipped his sleeping bag, got up, got a blanket, and put it on her. Wasn't that nice of him yes. to do that? Once again, he got into the sleeping bag, zipped it up, and started to drift off to sleep when the nun once again said, Father, I'm still very cold. Aww. He unzipped the bag, got up again, put another blanket on her, and got into his sleeping bag once again. <laughs> Just as his eyes closed, she said, Father, I'm so cold. <laughs> this time he remained there and said, Sister, I have an idea. We're out here in the wilderness where no one will ever know what happened. Uh -oh. Let's pretend we're married. Uh -oh. The nun purred, that's fine by me. <laughs> to which the priest yelled back, get up and get your own stupid blanket. <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Two equally that's good a, ones. That's uh, that's that's a that, that was kind of a toss-up. You all can let us know which one you yeah, like better. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and don't forget one bit of advice in yeah. party. Please, yes. If you forget to pay your exorcist, you might get repossessed. Whoa! <laughs> well, is that a girl? <laughs> yeah. I think that's a girl. <laughs> Yeah, you know, um, that reminds me, I don't know if, I don't think I've brought this up on air before, but um, Saturday Night Live, back when Saturday Night Live was really good, mm -hmm. they had, um, back when the movie that came out, The Exorcist, mm -hmm. um, Saturday Night Live did a little bit of a takeoff on that, and it was with Richard Pryor. I don't know if you remember seeing that or not, uh, but it was Richard Pryor and another priest that went in, and, you know, and if you want to YouTube it, it's really Richard Pryor was a funny, funny he comedian, really and he is, and he had lived a lot of that, apparently, is what I'm being wow. told, yeah. but it is hysterical. Uh, <laughs> so, if you want something, if, you know, if you're bored, and you're looking for YouTube, and you're looking for us, and you come across the Saturday Night Live Exorcist 2, I think it's called, okay. it's okay. Richard Pryor, watch it, it's a, it's a good, it's a funny little clip, Very so, good. especially if you've seen The Exorcist, it won't make any sense if you haven't seen The right. Exorcist, but, uh, <laughs> anyway. So yeah, so Lisa, any other things that we need to share today? I don't think so. I, I hope it taped better. It yeah, sounds better today. It so does. We'll, we'll find out. And I, th and I think so. not wearing our masks today helped a little bit. Yes. I, I think that yes. didn't help us a lot it on did. Tuesday. It had to be masks. a little closer in yeah. that. Yeah. You know, so I think we're a little bit further apart. In hindsight, maybe we just didn't say. do that exactly right. We were hoping yeah. it was not going to be too muffled, and I think it came right. across muffled right. and low. We had a lot of background noise too. We which did. Was like, we had some pots and pans clanging too. And well, and, and just equipment so, that was running. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So hopefully yeah. this will come hopefully out. Hopefully this better. will be better. Yeah, but but we didn't have. I miss your piano playing. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, you know, I had a couple of residents tell me that they thought I was actually playing it yes. at first. Seriously. Until they, uh, uh, until they actually get, saw me scratch my head, <laughs> yeah, and, then, yeah. and then, then then when I knew. stood up, that was they knew that was the end dead of that. Giveaway. So that yes. was a dead giveaway. Yes. So. I wish I had that kind of talent, but yeah. I, I don't. So. All right. Well, with that, we're going to say have a great Thursday afternoon. Yes. Um, enjoy the, the rain. Um, although it's not raining at the moment. That's good. Yeah, it was kind of spitting, though, wasn't it? It was. When we came up it, here. You know, there's an so. 80% chance of rain. There's an 80% chance of rain tomorrow. 80% right. chance of rain on Saturday. I think Sunday and Monday are fairly clear, and then we hit rain again. But, yeah. you know, it's, we're, we're hitting summer season. We are. It's starting to get we warmer. We're starting to get warmer. We hope you all have a great afternoon. We love you. Thank you. Hope you can hear us. <laughs> have a so. great weekend. <laughs> Bye. God bless.